Hi guys, in this video I'm jumping into a fun challenge that's just been launched on the Print Lab website, designing a 3D printed product to make outdoor adventures even better. Whether it's hiking, camping or cooking under the stars, the outdoors is full of little problems just waiting for clever solutions. So what are the first steps in any good design? Well, it's figuring out who you're designing for. That could be someone else, it could be a whole group, or in my case, well, it's just me. <laughs> When you're faced with an open-ended brief, the hardest part is often knowing where to begin. And with so many existing products on the market, it can feel like everything's already been done. That's why it's important to start looking for problems, not jumping straight to solutions. To uncover these problems, I've grabbed my backpack and I'm heading out to the woods to use a method called self-observation. Later, I'll review the footage with a fresh perspective, looking for moments of frustration, inefficiency, or missed opportunities. Anything that could spark a design idea, basically. The recording could be just notes on your phone, a storyboard of what you got up to, or even just a list of what happened from memory. So what were the problems when hiking with my gear? One thing I've noticed whilst hiking is getting my water bottle can be a bit of a faff. It's totally doable without taking off my backpack, but because it's a bit of an annoyance, I tend not to drink as much as I should to keep hydrated. First thing when setting up camp is finding somewhere to put my bag and keep the gear I take out of my bag off the ground. Some of this could be solved by how I pack the bag with the first things I need being put on top, but the reality of camping is stuff usually gets quite chaotic, so having somewhere to keep track of my gear would be really useful. Next step is setting up the tarp, and this can take a while as it requires me to tie some knots. I try to make it as expedient as possible, but my cordage inevitably gets tangled. So as you can see while I'm setting up the tarp, the rest of my gear is just all over the forest floor and this is probably one of the main times where I start losing my gear because I'm so focused on getting the shelter set up that I kind of lose track of the stuff that I've put down whilst doing the shelter. So having somewhere to keep all of this whilst I'm uh, preparing the tarp would be really, really useful. Once the tarp and ground sheet are down, I usually clear the rest of the area around my camp and start collecting any deadfall for firewood later. This usually means I'm taking an axe or a knife around with me, which if I put it down I can lose quite easily, so some sort of holder would be great. The last part before I settle down into my camp is to create some kind of seat for myself. I found a backrest makes a huge difference in your camp comfort, and I usually do this with a couple of sticks, but this can be a bit time consuming, so some kind of ready made solution would be great. That being said, it is a lot of fun making these things, and a big part of going out and camping is engaging with the environment around you. Once most of my camp is set up, I usually like to make myself a drink and take a breather. This is when I use my cook kit. I love and hate this system, as it's super efficient, light and compact, but in use it can be unstable and even dangerous. Now that I had my camp fully set up and a fire going, I took some time to sit down with my iPad and sketch out some initial ideas based off the observations I'd been taking throughout the day. The idea with this first rough draft of sketches is not to be too precious about anything, just get some of the ideas down on paper so that you don't forget them, and these can all be developed further down the line. I've developed this method of taking a picture of my environment and sketching over it, as it gives really good context for how these products could actually be set up in the environment. You'll also find that the act of sketching itself means that you have to start making some real world design decisions on how these ideas that were just kind of rough ideas in your head will actually look in real life. And this is the first step to starting to solidify your designs. So I'm back on the boat now after getting back from the camp and I'm just reviewing my self-observation footage. During the camp I identified several potential challenges ranging from tangled ropes to inefficient gear layouts. There is a lot here to work with, so to narrow it down I used a method called the importance difficulty matrix. I did this by writing down my ideas, then looking at existing solutions to these problems online. This gave me a better idea of what my own solutions could look like, as well as which solutions already had viable products on the market. 
Once I had these on the matrix, it helped me evaluate which problems were not only worth solving, but also realistically achievable and well suited to 3D printing. The biggest issue that stood out was my cook kit. My current setup had a lot of obvious issues that needed solving and a clear constraint to work within. This constraint was the pot itself, as I wanted whatever I made to fit wholly within the pot I was designing for. During my initial research, I found this design which seemed very much in line with what I wanted to create, but I felt I could add some more functionality to the design, which would more easily justify the added weight of the new components I wanted to create. So I'm going to spend a bit more time than I usually would talking through the design process I took with this design, as I think it's a really good example of the iterative design process I sometimes use when I don't have much of a preconceived idea for what I'm going to make. I started with the constraints of the gas canister and the size of the pot. I modelled these first, then began by addressing the first issue, which was the space between the gas canister and the inner walls of the pot. I created a base plate that the gas canister could connect to with a diameter that matched the pot to stop it rattling. I then realised I had space on the underside of the gas canister, and this gave me the idea to add an adapter to the base plate, which would allow me to attach a tent peg, turning the base plate into a little table that I could peg into the ground. So I printed off the base plate, and this is why we do test prints. As you can see, the temp peg is a little tight, so I'm gonna have to tweak the tolerance of this slot. And then the other issue that I'm finding is that this little lip that I've created to kind of click the gas canisters into the base plate um, is also too tight, and there's not enough flex in the plastic to allow it to pop in. So I'm gonna have to address that design as well. And as you can see, the layer lines are kind of flexing, and it's just cracked where I tried to force it in. The uh, one positive though is that it fits perfectly inside the pot, so I can keep that dimension the same moving forwards. This updated design is quite a bit different from the previous one, so let me talk you through it. To address the flexing clip issue, I designed three more cutouts to reduce the flex force needed to pop in the gas canister. These cutouts came from the next update, which are these print in place hinging components. I designed these to fold out and around, so when the base plate is in its table mode, you can connect the gas canister to it, creating a secure and stable base for the stove when cooking. Instead of printing out this whole new design, I used a method called split model testing to just print out a small part of the design to check the fit and function. So here's my section of the model to test the fit and fitting. The print in place mechanism works really good, and the latching component seems to fit really nicely and work holding the uh, gas canister when it's in the table mode. It also folds in and all fits within the underside of the gas canister. So win-win on both of those fronts. Whilst playing around with this though, I had an idea. So I've just modified this part by clipping off these edges, which are the edges here that hold the gas canister in. I didn't really like this solution as it required the plastic to flex on an angle where the print lines are not that strong. So it's not a great long-term solution for holding the gas canister in. But that got me thinking, if I connected that little latching element to the print in place hinge that moves, when the gas canister comes in, it'll push that down pushing this in and locking the gas canister down. I think this will work, but what I've realized from making this rough prototype model is that if I want this to be able to spin 180 so that it can latch in the table mode, I'm gonna to have to have a cutout here to allow this piece to swing 180 when this bit does as well. So we'll go back to CAD and try and model this up properly. With this update, I did away with the print in place hinging component as the parts are now a lot smaller and require a bit more strength. To achieve this, I made it into separate printable components that could be printed flat on the print bed and assembled using pins. Printing them flat would increase their strength and the assembly just required a push fit. The gas canister could now connect to the base plate using the hinging component and I was also able to squeeze in an extra feature. This was adding stabilizing legs, so if you're on rocky terrain where you can't use the tent peg, these three feet will help stabilize your stove. That being said, if you are able to use the temp peg, the legs still act as latches to hold your canister in the table mode. Getting this geometry to work in all three modes was a real challenge, but I'm really happy with the final design. So let's print it and see if it works in practice. 
So I've just assembled the base plate and um, I'm not gonna lie, quite surprised at how well this all went together. Usually when you're cutting something like this, um, you're kind of expecting a few iterations to get everything to click in place, but it's clicking and holding really positively and then just a little push and it disconnects. You can flip the legs down to put it into the stabilizer mode and it clicks in just as well in this orientation. The only bit that does cause a little bit of problem is clicking it in the table mode because you have to hold all three uh, legs up at the same time to click it in but I think that's a small price to pay for how stable it is once it is in table mode. I think the next step is to start addressing all of this extra space on the table and try and add a little bit more functionality by reducing the material, adding some holes to hang stuff. This will also reduce the weight of the overall part, which is always a big uh, consideration with camping gear. So one of the main things that kept coming up during my self-observation footage was how to store and organize small gear around camp. So I thought adding some holes to the table would be great for holding things like my knife and fork and lighters. But the problem was a set hole size didn't really lend itself to holding a range of different items. So I switched gears and tried to create a flexure mechanism that could adapt its size to fit the uh, item that you're putting in. The problem was it wasn't really adaptive enough so you can't really fit in a range of different items. So I changed gears a little bit and looked at what space I had on the table and came up with the idea for a kind of spring mechanism that could adapt its hole size. I did a range of different tests to get the spring travel and tension right and then eventually ended up with this design which ended up being print in place and the tension is great so you can add an item in and it will hold it in place without slipping. So I was really happy with this design, it had reduced the weight, didn't add any more um, assembly and I think it looks really cool. After a few final tweaks to the base design, adding some decorative elements and refining the tolerances, we were ready to move on to the next section of the pot organiser. This would be another table that would fit over the gas canister, levelling out the top of the canister within the pot. I was also inspired by this small metal folding table I saw online and wanted to replicate its function within my design. I added this folding print in place flap that could swing out and attach the gas canister and I also added a cutout for another temp peg to secure the table firmly to the ground. This gave yet another option for securing the stove allowing for more flexibility when setting up camp. Finally I filled the remaining space I had left within the pot with these three small containers. The middle container was sized to fit the gas canister's stove and the other two containers were perfectly sized to contain small items like lighters or some instant coffee. Not much has changed with the base plate, but I have added this cutout to allow the base plate to fit on top of the gas canister. In the pot this gives you a flat area to store items without them sliding down the sides, and in the future I might add a screw thread so it can act as a protector for the gas inlet. Moving up to the table, I'm really happy with how it works in conjunction with the stove. The temp peg gives plenty of support, and the table is just the right size to hold the frying pan lid. It's very satisfying. These cutouts on the side though are not super useful, so that might be something to look at in the future. Finally, the containers which hold the stove, coffee and sugar. For the stove container I added these cutouts to reduce weight, but unfortunately the overhangs were a little severe so I didn't get the best print quality out of them. The two smaller containers work great though, and with the addition of a little sellotape I was able to precisely tune the tolerance of the lids fit. A few other design elements that might not be immediately apparent are these small dovetails which hold the three containers together, allowing them to be used like a small table for food prep. I also sized the containers so that you could stack the two smaller ones inside the middle one, and I added this cutout on the gas canister's table so you could slot the middle container in like this, creating a sort of mini kitchen worktop. Overall I'm super happy with this design, but on long distance heights where every gram counts I might have to leave some of the components behind to save weight. Luckily this is where my final hidden design feature comes in. 
Each element is designed to be able to work in the pot independently, so if you just want to take a few of the elements with you, you can. So in conclusion, I'm really happy with the design I came up with and was really surprised at the final form it took. It just goes to show, if you've put in the groundwork of self-observation and know what you're trying to solve, you can creep up on a final design one iteration at a time. Trust the process, define your problem and design constraints and follow those design ideas to the natural conclusions and before long, you'll find you'll have a new, unique product that you can be proud of.